Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another One Piece discussion video. Today, we're going to be talking about and going over Kuzan. What I think his plan is, what I think he's doing right now, He's up, what he's up to. Uh, is he part of the Marine still? Is he part of Sword? Everything like that. Now, this is going to be like a two-part kind of video. This first part, I'm going to be talking about like what is Kuzan and what his plan is. And then in the next part that's going to come out in a couple days, I'm going to be talking about Blackbeard and what I think his plan is. I was originally just going to do a Blackbeard video, but then I got like started to make it and I was starting to think about Kuzan. I was like, wait a minute, I should make a video about Kuzan first. What's Kuzan's plan and all this stuff? And then I'll make a video about what Blackbeard's, uh, Blackbeard's plan is. So stay tuned for that Blackbeard video. But for today, we're going to be talking about Kuzan. Now, we've known about Aokiji for a very long time. We've known about him actually since chapter 303 and episode 225. In those chapters, we were on a, a long ring, long land, and we saw Luffy fight um, uh, Foxy Pirates in the Davy Back fight. And then after that finished, we got introduced to Kuzan. We had to learn a bit, a little bit about Robin's backstory and all that. And they fought, and Luffy and Robin got frozen, and, and uh, Luffy and Kuzan, or Luffy lost to Kuzan, but he kind of bested him a little bit and didn't have him kill him and everything like that. So we went through all that in chapter 303, but. After the time skip happened, post time skip, there was a big change in what Aokiji was up to. Before everything, or before the time skip, Aokiji was a uh, part of the government. He was a real government guy. He was doing stuff like pulling off buster calls, destroying Ohara, destroying other villages, doing all this stuff for the government. He was a government dog, basically. But then after the time skip, it seemed that he was no longer a part of the government. In chapter 650 or episode 370, after everything happened on Fishman Island, we got done with everything. Robin had her conversation with the king and everything like that. We got a conversation between Jinbei and the Straw Hats where Jinbei tells us, Following the war two years ago, Fleet Admiral Sengoku stepped down from his position. And to take over as Fleet Admiral, he endorsed Aokiji, who also enjoyed widespread support from his own subordinates. But dignitaries within the government strongly pushed for Akainu. Aokiji is not one to show motivation of any sort, but came out in furious opposition to Akainu being instated as Fleet Admiral. There was a confrontation. This unthinkable conflict between admirals led to a one-on-one -on -one duel on an island. Dead men tell no tales. The loser would have no quarrel with the outcome. The winner of the fight would seize the right to command the navy. The battle raged on for ten whole days, the talk of the entire world. They were evenly matched, meeting each other blow for blow until finally, Akainu emerged victorious. And thus, Sakazuki is the new fleet admiral of the navy. Luffy clutches his scar, Akainu. So Akiji is dead? They both suffered grievous injuries in the fight. At the sight of his longtime comrade entirely at his mercy, even Akainu could not bring himself to finish the job. As for Aokiji, unable to bear working for Akainu, he left the navy. So Aokiji isn't even a sailor anymore. Indeed. Who can say where he is now, and how he feels? It was certainly a very costly battle for the government to lose such an important figure. So after the time skip, after the fight at Marineford, Sengoku stepped down and he was like, okay, I'm done. Aokiji is going to be the next fleet admiral. But then people within the government, probably the five elders and Eam were like, no, we don't want Aokiji. Aokiji probably won't do our bidding the same way that, uh, Akainu would do it or or Kizaru would do it one of those two now I don't want to get too into spoilers because I want anime only watchers to be able to watch this video too I am going to talk about a couple spoilers later on but I'm going to preface that before I talk about it and it's going to be brief so uh, I'm not going to really go into spoilers too much but in the uh, most recent chapters we've seen uh, Kizaru fighting on Egghead and we've seen him doing a bunch of stuff so we know that he is down for the Marines so he definitely would have been in consideration for this head position but as you know Akainu is like bigger like he has a bigger presence he's probably stronger he uh he does a lot more for the government he's more down for the cause uh, as you can know as you know Kizaru is kind of eh, he's a little less down for the cause than Akainu I don't want to get into spoilers like I said but um Aokiji probably was the most likely to like leave to do something else to go against the government so the five elders and Eam needed to kind of get rid of him so they said Akainu's gonna be our guy they fought on um if you don't remember they fought on Punk Hazard they kind of changed the territory so that way half of it was frozen half of it was on fire and in the end Aokainu uh, won Aokiji got um discarded from the government and that was that and we didn't get to see him again for a pretty long time. By pretty long time, I mean like 
50 chapters or so because we talked about him in chapter 650 and then in chapter 699 or episode 625 is when we get to see him again but in terms of one piece that might not seem like a lot of chapters but for other anime or manga uh 50 chapters is a lot so that's what i mean by it's a lot of chapters but in chapter 699 or episode 625 if you don't remember we got to see Aokiji talking to Dofi and Smoker. After some stuff happened on Punk Hazard and um, Law called um, Dofi and he was saying all that stuff about him, he kind of tried to go over there where Smoke um, to Punk Hazard from Dressrosa. The Straw Hats and Law had already left and everything like that, but Smoker and um, his crew was still there. So Dofi got there, he started to fight Smoker and all that, and then Aokiji shows up. And when Aokiji shows up, they start having a conversation. They say to each other, I have no desire to fight you. <laughs> but if I don't have the option of silencing him for good, then I'll have to change my tactics. Will you tell me just one thing? Where do you stand? Just what are you now, Kuzan? The rumors I hear aren't good. And then Kuzan goes over to help Smoker out because if you don't remember, Smoker and Dofi were fighting before Aokiji stepped in and stopped it from happening. So Smoker goes over to help, or Aokiji goes over to help Smoker, and then uh, Dofi just goes over to Buffalo and Baby Five. They all hop on Buffalo and fly away while um, Smoker and Aokiji stay on the island. Dofi then says, He's no simple wanderer. Only a man who's made up his mind about something can make a face like that. So there are a couple things here that Dofi hints at in chapter 699 that are actually really, really important and just got revealed. Now, if you're not fully caught up to the anime or to the manga, I would kind of drop out now because I'm going to drop a big, big spoiler. And if you haven't seen up to the most recent, I would say the most recent two or three episodes of the anime or the most recent part of the manga, then I would drop out now because it turns out, I'm going to say it right now, Kuzan is actually a part of the Blackbeard Pirates. In the anime, it just got revealed. You saw him with Van Auger go to Big Mom's territory, fight Cracker, and steal um, Pudding. Well, that happened in the manga on the cover pages, so we already knew that and everything like that. I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, it turns out that Kuzan is actually a part of the Blackbeard Pirates. And it seems that Dofi actually knew that here when he says, The rumors I hear aren't good. The rumor probably was that he was a member of the Blackbeard Pirates and everything like that. And when he says at the end that a man like that only makes a face when his mind's made up, that was definitely something showing that Kuzan has a plan. He's doing something. Well, not really a plan, but he has resolve. He's not like a wanderer right now he's not just on his own doing something he has a plan and he's doing something he's up to something so we knew about this back in 699 but like i said it didn't get revealed to us until i think chapter um chapter 1064 so that's a big jump chapter 700 to chapter 1064 that's a lot of chapters in between that jump to finding out so we knew all that about uh or we knew we knew a little bit about Aokiji back then. And then uh, after that talk with Dofi and uh, he leaves and everything like that, we get a little talk between Smoker and Aokiji where they say, I never thought the government was the end all be all. You don't have to be affiliated with the Navy to accomplish things in the world. There are some things you can only see when you remain independent. I was a dead man just now. <laughs> hmm. Then I guess it was fate that brought me here. Why are you here? To see you. How did you know I'd be here? You wouldn't have the black market connections now, would you? Black market? He's a former admiral. If you're done bandaging him, then give us some space. Duh! I'm just me, Smoker. Fine, then. Just make sure you don't take your eyes off of Doflamingo. He's one of the seven warlords and preceding king of Dressrosa. He's an exceedingly rare class of pirate, unlike even the snake princess of the Kuja. Inform Sakazuki and the have the admirals mobilized. In a worst-case scenario, the gears will come undone before our eyes. And this will be the greatest challenge yet faced by Sakazuki's new naval headquarters. I've given you my warning. Hey, you men, the fact that you saw me is a, um, you know, whatever. I forget, who cares? Fine, well, keep it a secret that we saw you. So what I get from that conversation is, Aokiji is a free man. He's finally gone outside of the Marines and he sees for himself that you don't have to be a part of this organized government, organized Marines to be able to do good in the world. You can be independent. You can be by yourself. You can be a part of maybe a pirate crew per se and still have an impact on the world. And you can still be doing the good things that he would be doing in the Marines, if not more. And you can see that even more in that one panel where he says, I'm just me, Smoker. He's just trying to tell Smoker like, hey, 
I haven't changed. I still have the same morals, the same everything. I might be somewhere else in life. I might be doing something else, but I actually have the same, the same, the same mindset. I'm the same person. I haven't changed. I'm still me. And I feel like that's a really big character change for him because he went from this person who, you know, he was doing buster calls. He was like, he, he, he saved, um, this is a big spoiler for uh, people who are anime only watchers. I'm going to be saying this really briefly. I'm going to put a spoiler up here somewhere. So just be warned. I'm going to be spoiling something real quick. But he did, I'm just saying it right now, he did save Saul's life. Saul is still alive. When that buster call happened, he didn't save Saul. So there was some good in him all the way back then. But he was still a part of this corrupt government that was pulling off buster calls and doing all this stuff and destroying Ohara. He was a part of that. Now, did he do most of it? No, because Akainu was there and Akainu was the one who took control and did most of the attacking. But still, he was there and he participated in something that he could have easily stopped with his power. He Akainu wasn't as strong as Akiji at this time. I think Akiji was already an admiral. He had been training um uh under a lot of a lot of big people in the government. That's that's another little spoiler I don't want to bring up, but he uh he was a very, a very big presence in the government at the time, and I think Akainu was still just a regular sailor or soldier or something like that, or maybe he was a vice admiral at the time and he was on one of the ships or something like that, but he wasn't as big as Aokiji. Aokiji could have stopped him, he could have done something to try to um, save Ohara, but he didn't. So that shows you that at the time, he was all in on this government, well maybe not all in, but he was mostly in on this government, and now he, at that he's out of it and hasn't been a part of it, he can see that he can do the same amount of good that he could a part of it and that's a good character change for me and that's why i feel like kuzan even though he's with the blackbeard pirates right now he is still a good person even though maybe the blackbeard pirates aren't all good people so after that conversation with aokiji and smoker was over and everyone left and they went their separate ways we don't hear about aokiji again for about 100 or so chapters until chapter 793 or episode 736. In these chapters, we get the five elders talking about how Kuzan was a member of the Blackbeard Pirates or could be or is joining the Blackbeard Pirates. Now, I'm going to be bringing up all these instances because I kind of want to go over all the stuff that's mentioned about like Kuzan and Sword and all the stuff because I'm going to be going into detail about is Kuzan a part of Sword? Like, what is his plan? That's the whole point of this video. So, um, the government or the uh, five elders say, if you don't remember, they're having a conversation with the kind of the five elders about what happened on Dressrosa after Dopey got defeated and all that. They were talking about Dopey, and then they kind of go into Kuzan. Like I said, they say, And what of Kuzan then? He's dedicated his considerable power to assisting Blackbeard of all people. A fine message that sends about the Navy. And then Akainu says, That fool is long gone from the ranks. Whatever he does now has nothing to do with us. So right there, that was Akainu. As far as Akainu's concerned, Aokiji is not a part of the government in any way whatsoever. And it seems that the five elders probably agree with him on that. So in that way, according to the person who's supposed to be the head of the government, Akainu or Akiji is not not a part of the government anymore he's not there he's not in it anything he does is not a reflection of the government because he's not a part of them anymore he defeated him he left that fool is no longer a part of the government so that's another kind of like push towards something saying is he a part of sword is he a part of um the government still i i don't know i don't i don't think so i don't really think he's a part of the government at all anymore we're going to be getting into that later but after this we actually get introduced to sword before we get to see aokiji again the next thing we get into is the first mention of sword so the first mention of sword comes from chapter 956 or episode 957 if you don't remember while we were on wano and all this stuff was going on drake makes a call to kobe and we find out about sword a secret organization within the government in their conversation they say it's it's me, Kobe. Oh, hang on. I'll find a quiet spot. Ah, right. See. Mist, says back Drake. Really? All of that? Yes. We can't keep up with it all, even with all the sailors in the world. So as far as your situation goes, the military won't be acting on it, just as we planned. I mean, we don't have the manpower. The land of Wano isn't a member of the world government, after all. That's for the best, then. But since Big Mom showed up on Onigashima, the Navy is hoping the pirates will knock each other out. Figures. There's just one problem. You know how Kaido and Big Mom were at each other's throats the other day? Now they're teaming up. Huh? W -w -w what does that mean? Navy HQ Top Secret Special Force Captain of Sword X Drake. As for Straw Hat Luffy, the situation's stagnant. No news of a breakout. And there's one more forbidding bit of news. In the capital the other day, I saw CP0. What? Why are they in Wano? I don't like the implications. Navy HQ Rear Admiral Member of Sword Kobe. It would mean that the government's coming to a pirate-led Wano to conduct deals of some kind. 
My mind went blank for a minute after I saw it. Where are you now? I'm on my way to the Island of Women to capture the pirate Empress Boa Hancock. So in that conversation between Kobe and Drake, it gets revealed in those text boxes that these two are members of a secret organization called SWORD. And uh, um, in these chapters and episodes, we don't really get too, too much else. We just see them talking about this. We see that there's a secret code to get in. You have to say C, and then the person on the other end says miss to confirm that they're the right person. And as long as all those steps have been... Uh, in place or put or, or been followed correctly then you're able to have the secret conversation with each other and in it they talk about what's happening on wano but then they also talk about things like cp0 coming to wano and conducting investigations and stuff like that or conducting business and they seem to be questioning that and going against that and being like why are they here i don't like this so it seems like yes they're part of the military and yes they're part of like the same kind of family that cp0 was a part of in terms of like working and stuff like that but do they trust CP0? Do they trust the government? It seems that Drake and Kobe are kind of not trustworthy of the government as much as maybe, say, Rob Lucci or somebody else would be. And just like I was saying how Kobe and Drake don't seem to really trust CP0 and the other government, it also seems that CP0 doesn't trust Drake and uh, um, Kobe and stuff like that. Because in chapter 1032, they say... Oh, also, it's episode 1059. Don't forget that. Episode 1059, they say... X Drake. Do you think we're not aware of who exactly you are? Then why don't you start with some excuses, says Drake. Inconvenient truths are meant to be erased. And then they attack and they start fighting. So it seems that CP0 knows exactly what S.W.O.R.D. is and they know that S.W.O.R.D. is not on their side. It seems like they kind of don't... It's kind of weird, like, they're on the same team, but they're not at the same time. Because it seems that CP0 is a part of the government, but they work indirect contact to say like the five elders and everything like that whereas um sword works kind of in the opposite of that they work in the shadows if anything happens to them they get disbarred from the uh, marines and it's like they were never even there in the first place so it's kind of like these two different sides of the government and they're kind of going against each other because one side is kind of like like I would say it like this, Aokiji side and Aikainu side, if you kind of want to think about it like that. Everybody on Aokiji side, even though he's not there anymore, they had like the same kind of mindset that he had where like freedom and like gaining information and kind of saving people. Whereas the CP0 is kind of like Aikainu where they're like attacking and um all for the government, all for the Marines, all for the five girls saying everything like that. So that's kind of how I take a look at it. And that's how I see this fight happening. It's kind of like Aokiji versus Aikainu all over again, but you know, they're ideals. Now, I'm going to talk again about sword in a little bit but i want to get back to talking about aokiji and kind of where he was at and what he was doing at the time of all this happening on the cover page of chapter 1046 even though we know that he was kind of with blackbeard it was revealed to us back in those chapters where the five elders are talking about him in chapter 1046 we kind of get it revealed again where we get him and van auger's foot on the cover page and then after that in chapters 1062 through 1063 we also get to see um, a bunch of uh, Big Mom's territory frozen over. So if you know anything about One Piece, you know that Aokiji is one of the only people with this kind of frozen ability, at, at least at this point. And then in chapter 1064, it's finally revealed on the cover page that Aokiji is part of the Blackbeard Pirates. You see him standing there with Van Auger and putting right in front of them, showing you that he's not only part of the Blackbeard Pirates, but he's also helping them by freezing over Big Mom's territory and capturing one of their members or one of their family members. Now, like I said, we already knew that Aokiji was kind of already a part of the Blackbeard Pirates, but this is just kind of confirmation of it. We get to see, okay, he's fighting for them, he's doing stuff for them, he's with them, he's definitely a part of the Blackbeard Pirates. So that's just confirmation right there. And then after that, we get talking about Sword again, like I said. In chapter 1061 or episode 1090, after Kobe gets captured and people find out at the Marines and they're talking about it, we get a conversation or kind of meeting between a couple sword members, sword members, including like Helmeppo and Prince Groose, where they talk about Kobe. They say, "Please, guys, we're supposed to be comrades. I'm begging you. I'm begging you too, sir. Captain Kobe's done so much for me. Navy HQ Lieutenant Commander Sword Helmeppo, Navy HQ Commander Sword Hibari. You have gotta go with us to Pirate Island. We need this, Your Highness. Please, Your Highness." Yeah, but you're talking about Pirate Island, Blackbeard's hideout, a place crawling with so many pirates every surface is pockmarked from the constant shootouts. That's why they call it Full of Lead, Navy HQ Rear Admiral Sword Prince Groose. But we're so close to Egghead, we could take the Seraphim. Have you lost your minds? 
take a step back and reassess. We don't even have contact with Drake at this point. There's nothing we can do. Get it through your heads. So right there, it kind of shows you a couple more members of Sword. So we know that Helmeppo is a part of it. Uh, I think this might be the first introduction of Hibari, or she might have been shown a couple more times. But Hibari is a member of Sword. She's been short, shown a couple more times now. Prince Gruus is a part of Sword. That's been confirmed at this point. So it shows a couple more members of Sword and talks about how you know they can kind of go and get the Seraphim if they needed to. But you know right now they can't because they still can't contact Drake because uh, Drake was fighting on Wano. I think he's out right now. I don't think Drake's dead or anything like that. I forget what happens with Drake exactly. I got to go back and look it up. But I think Drake's okay right now. We're not really talking about Drake at this video. Um, I just want to bring up a couple members of Sword and talk about how, like, you know, they have access to these certain, um, of, like, uh, Seraphim and certain things from Vegapunk. So they're like an actual member of the government, like actual like good member or like higher up member of the government, they're able to use the Seraphim and use the tools, all like this, all this stuff. So even though CP0 and them kind of don't get along, it seems like they are definitely still part of the Marines. Now, real quick, before I go any further, I'm going to be talking about some spoilers up ahead. I'm going to be talking about chapters 1071, 1080, and 1081, which have not been animated yet. So if you're an anime only watcher and you want to steer clear of any spoilers, I would kind of move forward a little bit. I'm not going to really, I'm going to be talking about these spoilers and mentioning them a little bit, but I'm not going to be going too much further into depth besides mentioning them and going over them. So if you want to keep watching this video, I would say skip ahead to the time that's on the screen right now. I don't know which area it's going to be in, but skip ahead to the time on the screen and uh, you should be good to keep watching. So going forward with the spoilers. So real quick, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of something that happens in chapter 1071. At the very end, um, if you don't remember, Helmeppo went to Prince Cruz and he was like, please, we need to go to Full Lead, we need to save Kobe, we need to do all this stuff. And everyone was like, no, we can't do that, we can't do that. But at the very end of uh, chapter 1071, Gart pulls up to whatever marine island they're on and he starts yelling out, Helmeppo, get out here. They say back, is that a pirate? Someone's calling out Helmeppo by name, he's gonna kill him. Oh, it's Vice Admiral Garp ship. Vice Admiral Garp? Oh, thank goodness. It's Kobe, Blackbeard's got Kobe and there's nothing I could do. Oh, quit your weeping, boy. Here's what we'll do. Get on board. We're gonna sail for the pirate island full of lead. Wipe the floor with those pirates and rescue Captain Kobe. And then you can see Helmeppo and Hibario cry and they go, Vice Admiral Garp! So the reason why I want to bring that up is I kind of want to talk about Garp and kind of his connection to Sword. It doesn't say anything about Garp being with Sword or Garp being anything a part of Sword, but... Him being a part of Sword or kind of maybe being the creator very long ago or being just somebody who was like, he was always doing stuff that wasn't for the benefit of the Marines, like, you know, the Five Elders and Eam. So he was kind of deemed as like a, a, a loose cannon maybe. And they kind of put a title on him as like, okay, yeah, he's a part of the Marines, but if he, he does anything wrong, we can cut him loose at any time. Like he had no connections and Garp was probably like, that's okay with me. I'm just here to do my thing, to save people and to not follow what the Five Elders tell me to do. So he took that title and he was like, I'm good with it. And as the years went on, he kind of probably recruited recruited people Aokiji he probably recruited because if you don't remember he is a member of like or he was trained just like Kobe was um by Garp and he was kind of um shown the ropes by Garp and that's why he's so strong and has such good hockey because Garp and him would go out and they would punch all of the battleships that they had at the marines they call them battleship bags instead of punching bags so that's how Akiji is so strong that's why Kobe is so strong because they trained under Garp and uh as you can see Kobe is a part of sword so maybe at the time Aokiji was also a part of sword um so I think I, he was an admiral could an admiral be a part of sword maybe maybe he was a part of sword at some point and then he kind of quit sword to become an admiral and when he became one he wasn't one anymore and now that he's left he's still not a part of sword i don't know it's something like that but um as far as i know and as far as i think garp is a part of sword and he might be even just the creator of sword I forget what specific chapters, but also the fact that Garp was fighting Kuzan and they were going at it like really hard, like they were actually trying to fight each other. I mean, it could be for appearances, but most of these people on this island are a part of Sword, so unless they kind of coordinated this beforehand and they're like, okay, we're going to fight each other, I don't see how they kind of were like connected enough to be like, okay, we're going to fight each other just for just to for the show, just to show people that we're not with each other even though we are. I don't think that's something that both of them would do. I feel like both of them would just say, ah, screw it. We're both a part of Sword. Ah, our gig's up. We're both gonna, just gonna start destroying stuff. Kuzan doesn't remember stuff all the time. Kuzan's forgetful. He just goes, ah, forget it. I'm not gonna do that or I'm just gonna forget it. So I don't see how he would be able to remember this plan he had with Garp to be able to like coerce everybody and be like, oh, we're enemies even though we're friends. So I feel like at this point in time uh, in the uh, anime or in the manga, they are not friends. They're actually enemies or 
not enemies per se, but they're not on the same side. And if they see each other, they do have to fight. The next chapter I want to talk about is chapter 1080. In this chapter, a whole bunch happens with Kobe. He's running around. But then we get a flashback from when Kobe is first captured by the Blackbeard Pirates, where Kuzan and all them, Kobe comes out and says, oh, you can use me as ransom, but I'm a part of sword. So it doesn't really mean a lot because they could just cut me loose at any time. And the Blackbeard Pirates and Blackbeard are like, what? What sword? And then Aokiji actually is able to explain it to all of us. He says... I got a plan to turn Pirate Island here into its own country, one that's a member of the world government, and I'll be the king, Blackbeard Kingdom. How does that sound? Zeh ha 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 ha. Don't be ridiculous. You know that will never fly. A country of criminals? Now don't go trampling on a man's dream. Besides, I'm using your life as a bargaining chip. If the government and Navy give in to terrorist acts like these, then all hope is truly lost. Anyway, it's not going to work. I'm a member of S.W.O.R.D. And then Aokiji's head kind of clicks back and he's like, huh? Blackbeard says back, sword, that's supposed to mean something? Aokiji says, ah, he's right. It won't work. Give up on the deal, Teach. What it means is he's Navy, but he ain't Navy. He's turned in his Marine code. Think of sword as sailors who have already submitted their resignations. It means they can choose to fight the four emperors if they want without needing permission from above. They can also ignore any and all orders they choose. They're wild card commandos. In exchange, the Navy assumes no responsibility for their actions and can cut them loose at any moment. Ah, I see what you're saying. So that explains the folks who came charging straight for us. Unlike the usual mopes who sit around waiting for clearance. Zay ha 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 ha, I like your style. But I'm not changing plans. I'll take this tactic as far as it'll go. So that kind of backs up what I was saying before about how maybe Garp created this by accident by just being like a guy who goes off and does his own thing because these people turn in their marine code and they can do whatever they want and they can go fight the admirals whenever they want and do all this stuff. So back when Roger was big and Roger was doing all this stuff, Garp was probably going out and fighting him whenever he wanted, no clearance, no nothing. So they were like, you know what? You want to keep doing that? Hand in your marine code and you can do whatever you want, Garp. And he's like, really? I can do whatever I want. Just hand in my room marine code. Okay, take it. So he was probably the original member of S.W.O.R.D. And like I said, the reason Aokiji might know all this stuff is because he kind of has the same mindset as Garp where he will kind of go and do his own thing even without permission. So I feel like maybe he maybe at the start was a part of S.W.O.R.D. with Garp. Maybe it wasn't called S.W.O.R.D. Maybe it was called something else. But him and G Kobe being a part of S.W.O.R.D. doesn't overlap. That's why I feel when he became one of the admirals, they kind of gave him his marine code back and he was a wasn't able to do anything he wanted anymore. Actually, you know what? He probably had the same freedoms, but he was an admiral. So he had to work straight on under the five uh, elders so he wasn't really able to do all he wanted but if he wanted to fight the admirals or something he probably wouldn't need, need the same clearance that everyone else would because the five elders probably would have just been like fight him fight him right now beat him beat luffy one of the five elders because you know kizaru he's going out and he's fighting him right now so why couldn't kuzan that also would explain why aokiji or kuzan has all this information on sword he is a me he was a member but he's not anymore and the reason why he was surprised when kobe said he was was because he wasn't a member when when Kobe came into the Marines and all that stuff. So he was already an admiral. He had already been away from S.W.O.R.D. and not a part of it for a while. He had already not been one of Garp's apprentices for a while. And then Kobe comes in, becomes one of Garp's main apprentices, becomes a part of S.W.O.R.D. And Aokiji has no way of knowing because he doesn't keep up with that stuff anymore. So he probably was a member of S.W.O.R.D., not anymore or not since he was an admiral. And then the last thing I want to talk about, which I think is actually the last time that we see Kuzan in the manga so far, until I probably see him again coming up, we'll probably see him again with the Blackbeard Pirates. But as for right now, as of chapter, I think it's um 11, 11, we haven't seen Kuzan again. So in chapter 1081, we get the flashback of, I think after Punk Hazard, this is like directly after he lost and he left the Marines. Uh, he goes to a bar, he starts drinking. And then uh, on that island, the Blackbeard Pirates pull up and they find him in this bar. I think he freezes um, San Juan Wolf. So they're all freaking out. They're like, oh my God, San Juan Wolf has been frozen. And then they go inside the bar and they see Aokiji. And then Aokiji and the Blackbeard start having a conversation. They say to each other, Two years ago, Admirals Alkainu and Aokiji fought over the right to be the next naval fleet admiral. About a year after that, on an island in the New World, hey, what happened here? Ah, it's Blackbeard. Get out of town. Ah, who did this? Hold that. I don't even need to ask. There's only one man who could do such a thing. It's you, Aokiji. All my people are frozen outside. Undo your powers. Oh, shut up. Better watch out with that tremor tremor fruit here. Your crew will crumble to pieces. You're their captain, you should know. You really think I struck first? Plus, you've heard the situation. I'm in a state of mourning. It's not the right time to test me. You can imagine who was in the wrong here. And then after they become friends, Zay ha 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 ha. I like the way you drink ice candy. Same to you, sick bastard. Da ha 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 ha. Hey, we need more drinks over here. 
So what did I kind of say after that? Two men who came up the ranks together in a fight to the death. I can feel something boiling up within me. You think you're made of magma? Yeah! <laughs> so look at me now. I've only got one leg. I have to fill out the pair with ice at all times. Gah, so that's what it's like when admirals fight. What about a kainu? Did you at least rip an arm off? Nah, but he should be scarred all over. Marin, hoo 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 hoo. Speaking of scars, Commodore, do you think he knows about the burn scar? Burn scar? And then they kind of talk about the burn scar guy a little bit. I'll just glance over that. Planoglyphs got no good memories about them. If I'd seen one of those red stones at O'Hara, I wouldn't forget it. But all I remember was a good friend fighting back against the government and the sad lonely eyes of a little girl whose fate rested in the palm of my hand. Sounds like a real boring story. What do you think, Commodore? If we take his power, would it, it would be a huge boost. So they're talking about taking Kuzan's power. And then he says back, I heard that, you wretched scum. Do I need to send you all to a frozen hellscape? Ah! Oh, and I've heard about how you're hunting for devil fruit powers. You want to try me? Wait, Kuzan, calm down, says Blackbeard. I apologize. My man here made a stupid suggestion, but that's not my intent. Just the opposite. Would you ride with us? Huh? Have you lost your mind, Captain? You're out of a job, ain't you? Anything lined up? What else are you going to do, huh? Chase around by the powers of justice? But in our world, justice takes a different form. Watch yourself. Just because we shared a few drinks doesn't mean I trust any of the lot of you. Easy now, easy. Have you got the wrong idea about pirates? Nobody said we were all the best of friends here. The only thing a pirate needs is an alignment of interests. You're a free man. What do you want, Kuzan? And you can see his face there. This conversation really struck a chord with him. What Blackbeard was saying about his plan aligning with Kuzan's plan and what they had in mind is kind of like uh, Bla opening Blackbeard or Kuzan's eyes up to a new world and a new avenue that he can go down. So that's kind of why I'm making this a two-part video because I want to talk about Kuzan, but at the same time, it seems that Kuzan's... Um, uh, like mindset semi aligns with Blackbeard to the point where he was able to join them. So I'm going to be talking about Kuzan in this one. And then I, like I said, I'm making a video about Blackbeard in a couple days. But um, like I said, this was a very, very important moment for Kuzan because not only is it him joining a pirate crew, which as a Marine, he is super against, but it's also him joining a pirate crew that seems to be kind of evil like i don't know if they're evil evil but i'm gonna be going that in the blackbeard video but as far as we know they're killing people they're chasing devil fruits they they killed uh well i guess they didn't kill whitebeard but they stole whitebeard's fruit they uh killed the guy who had the dark dark fruit as far as we know uh blackbeard is not such a great guy he doesn't have any good guys on his crew they're all criminals basically and aokiji joined this crew full of criminals so why did he do it that's probably because their ideals align with each other. So that's about it for the anime and the manga. We haven't seen Aokiji uh, or Kuzan again since uh, these last couple chapters, chapter 1081, 1080, chapter 1071. So it's probably going to be a little bit before we see him again, but the Blackbeard Pirates have been shown a bunch of times in the most recent chapters. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him either on a cover page or in a chapter coming up very soon. But I just want to get one main thing out of the way first. We're going to talk about, is Aokiji still a part of the Marines? As far as everything I've read and everything I've seen and all the research that I've done, it seems that Aokiji is not a part of the Marines whatsoever. He's not a member of S.W.O.R.D. He's not a member of some other secret organization. He's not still an admiral in disguise. He's just not a part of the Marines at all. After that fight with the Kainu on Punk Hazard and everything happened and he left, he actually left. He wasn't a part of sword when he was an admiral like i said so he wasn't like somebody who just gave up his resignation or someone that could just go off the grid he uh actually lost and he actually was like okay i'm done i'm leaving and he wandered the world or basically all over the one piece universe for a whole year before finding blackbeard so no he is not a part of the marines anyway that fight with garp should kind of prove it in some way because you know garp is still a part of the marines and aokiji fighting him isn't really a good like i said they're not really the type of people who would put on an act like that so it seems like he is yes a fully fully separated from the world government so if he's not a part of the marines he's not a part of like the world government sword any other secret organization something like that then what is he up to what is his plan what is his motivation that's what i'm going to be getting into right now so one idea that i saw floating around and i kind of like i thought it was like yeah, it could be something is that kuzan is actually a part of the revolutionary army now I don't know how I feel about this 100% because at the time when he was on that bar, it seemed like he was pretty depressed. It seemed like he was alone. It didn't seem like he was a part of any organization or anything like that. So I don't know how I feel about this one, but it does have a little bit of credibility where, you know, Kuzan is trying to do things for the best and trying to always, you know, 
help people out and do all this good stuff for people. So maybe he saw the revolutionaries as another avenue after he got kicked out of the Marines. He met up with Dragon. He met up with Ivankov, something like that. He went and talked to them and he kind of liked them. But he was like, you know what? I'll be a part of you guys, but I'll be like a traveling revolutionary. I'll go around and I'll help people as I'm like walking around or going around the world. If you need me, hit me on my transponders now. I'll help you. And then when Blackbeard came and he met Blackbeard, he kind of had an opportunity to join a pirate. So that way, like he has kind of like inside information on something like that, like like a pirate. Maybe he talked to Blackbeard and he planted himself there. He was there on purpose to join the 10 Titanic captains. And then one day he's going to betray them, uh, either giving information to the revolutionaries or maybe he goes back to the government or something. Or maybe he's just solo and he'll uh, betray them eventually. But if he's a part of the revolutionary army, then at some point he's probably going to uh, betray the Blackbeard pirates. Now, I don't really know how I feel about that one too much. I don't really put any credibility into that one 100%. Now, I'm saying it because it could be a possibility but what i think is the main thing is that he was a solo guy after he left the marines he was solo he was out on the waters he was just traveling around trying to find himself trying to figure out a purpose in life blackbeard comes along he's um going into the bar they kind of fight at first and then he kind of makes a friend with them they're talking they're talking he kind of is like okay you know what these guys fight people but you know what they're not too bad of people i'm able to joke around with them a little bit and then you know they get talking and then blackbeard offers to be a part of the, his crew and then he talks about you know even if our ideas align a little bit then you can have the freedom to kind of do what you want like what do you want to do kuzan or what do you want to do aokiji what do you want to do with your life and that kind of struck a chord with him like i said and it kind of made him think like listen i am like a good person, I do help people out, and Blackbeard may be a pirate, and he may be trying to like do and raid all the stuff, but is he really like a bad, bad guy? Have we really seen like yes, he does have criminals on his um on his pirate ship, and yes, he would let them go crazy on normal civilians if he wanted to. If it did like if it would hinder him, like if the civilians getting hurt would like make Luffy go crazy or something like that, he may be like, Stop that, don't do that because it's gonna make him go crazy, but any other time, he'll be like, I don't care what you guys do. Go do your thing. I don't care. But So in that sense, Kuzan doesn't align with them. But maybe the fact that these guys are really free and they're able to kind of do what they want and go out there and live their life to the fullest. Like, you know, that's basically what they're doing. These pirates love doing this. They're not doing it just because. These pirates like being pirates. They like doing this. They like plundering. They like getting devil fruits. They like fighting. So Kuzan sees that and he's like, you know what? I've been a part of this government my whole life where they're kind of like kept me down, held me down, and kind of like kept me on this path. I had to serve under the five elders for a long time as an admiral, and now I'm finally free to do what I want. And those are kind of what the uh, aligns with him and his mindset and things like that. It's not so much the plundering the pirate, becoming the pirate king, helping Blackbeard, hurting people. It's more as I'm free now. I can do what I want. I can do what I feel. Also, don't forget, Aokiji is not one for hurt or is not against hurting civilians because he did go on Ohara, he did let all that happen to those civilians, he did free Saul, he did, I mean, he did let Robin escape, giving him kind of like showing you he does have a heart, he does uh, have a good personality, he is a good person somewhat, but don't forget, he did attack innocent civilians just because they were going against the world government that's kind of why i think now he kind of resents them a lot and he hates them and that's why he's kind of like fighting garp and he's like listen man you are a part of this yeah you haven't been an admiral yet yeah you've been a vice admiral to kind of go against the five elders and everything like that but you're still a part of this organization you're still kind of giving them power and giving them your name and letting them use you however you want even if you aren't working under them directly you're still letting them use you and he probably resents garb for that so would he betray blackbeard i don't really know maybe if something came along and blackbeard did something really really gruesome and really really bad to the point where Kuzan sees it and he's like, this guy's like the five elders. He might stand up against Blackbeard. But as of right now, it seems like he's fully on board. He's fully one of the 10 Titanic captains. And one thing I do want to mention about him betraying Blackbeard is everybody's bringing up the fact that these are called the 10 Titanic captains and Kuzan's main ability is ice. So it could be a thing where he will betray them in the future. And that's kind of like a setup for it where they're all the 10 Titanic captains and he's the iceberg that's going to sink them. So we could see that coming up in the future. Maybe he'll join Luffy. Maybe he'll join like the revolutionaries. Like I said, maybe he's been a part of them this whole time. But what I really think is he's in this organization or he's in this pirate group to stay and he's actually a part of them. If anything, if he doesn't think he's a part of them, he's just with them for fun and he thinks of himself as like a solo act still. So that could be why he betrays them. Like maybe, like I said, they do something bad against civilians or like somebody he cares about one day. And so he has to betray them because he still thinks of himself as like 
one of the Marines or, you know, a solo person or, you know, family with Garp or something like that. So he'll betray them in that way. But anything else, I really don't see it happening. I think he is really a part of the Blackbeard Pirates for good. What do you guys think? This was kind of a longer video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what you think Aokiji's plan is. Is he part of the revolutionaries? Is he part of the government? Is he really a part of Blackbeard's ship? Is he going to be betray Blackbeard at all in the future? Let me know down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed, please don't forget to leave a like down below, subscribe, and hit the bell. It helps out my channel so much, helps show my videos to even more One Piece fans, and we get to make even more One Piece content. It helps me out so much, you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. I just hit 800 the other day. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy for all of you guys. Thank you so much. It really, really means the world to me. And like I said before, I'm going to have a What is Blackbeard's Plan video coming out very soon. I'm going to have more of the Luffy's Dream Pirate Crew coming out very soon. So stay tuned for all those as well as my Who is Shanks video. That one's going to be out a little later. That one takes a little bit longer to, to make. I'm going to have to go through everything with Shanks. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you all next time. Peace.